All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the derivative d dx of the natural log of 7x. And so in order to take the derivative of a natural log function, you need to know two different rules, although they're technically just one rule, but one is a simpler case of the other. And that is that if we have the derivative of the natural log of x, that is equal to one divided by x. And of course, that is given that x is a positive value because the natural log function is only defined for positive values. And so that's the simplest form of the derivative rule for the natural log function. But we also have the more complete form that if you have the natural log of u, where u is a differentiable function of x, then this is going to be equal to one divided by u, whatever is inside that natural log function, times the derivative of u with respect to x. And so another way of writing that would be that this is equal to u prime for the derivative of u divided by u. And once again, that is provided that u is greater than zero. And so for our example right here, if we wanna take the derivative of the natural log of seven x, we first will take whatever is inside our natural log function, right? Seven x is going to be our u in this case, and we're going to put it under one, right? So we're gonna have that this is equal to one divided by seven x, right? That is what is inside our function. So if we're following this rule, we have one divided by u, which is one divided by seven x, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that function. And so we'll multiply by the derivative of seven x, and the derivative of seven x is just going to be equal to seven, because if you have a variable to the first power, the derivative of that variable is just going to be equal to the coefficient of that variable, which is seven. So we just multiply by seven, and so if we simplify, these sevens will cancel out, and so we'll find that our derivative is equal to one divided by x. And so that will be our final answer and the derivative of this function. Let's look at another example. All right, so next we wanna find the derivative of the natural log of x to the sixth power. And so if we use the derivative rule that we just looked at, we are going to start by having that this is equal to one divided by what is inside our natural log function. And so we will have x to the sixth power, and then we will multiply by the derivative of that function. And so the derivative of x to the sixth power is going to be six x to the fifth power because we first multiply this exponent down. So we have six times x, and then that new exponent is going to be six minus one, right? We always subtract one from that exponent when we follow the power rule for derivatives. And so our derivative is six x to the fifth power. And so this will be equal to six x to the fifth power divided by x to the sixth power. And you'll notice that each of these terms have x to the fifth power in them. And so this one is going to completely cancel out and this will become x to the first power. And so this is just equal to six divided by x. And that is our derivative. Now, this is definitely one way of finding this derivative. But if we remember something about the natural log function or just logarithms in general, there is a property that allows us to make this derivative even simpler. And that is if you have a natural log of some value to a power, you are able to bring that power to the outside. The official property is that if you have the natural log of some value a to the power n, that is equal to that power n times the natural log of a, right? So we just move that power to the outside and multiply it by the natural log. And so if we use that rule in this case, we can rewrite our derivative to be d dx of six times the natural log of x, right? We just moved this power of six to the outside and multiplied it by the natural log. And so we're just left with that x on the inside of the function. And so then we'll have that this is equal to six times the derivative d dx of the natural log function, right? We can just pull out any constant multiple to the outside of a derivative. And so this is going to be equal to six times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is just one divided by x. And so that will be equal to six divided by x. And so either way, we get this same answer. However, this method is a little bit quicker and maybe a little bit easier if you remember that property of logs. All right, for our next example, we have the function f of x is equal to the natural log of x minus eight divided by x cubed. And we wanna find the derivative f prime of x. And so before we do anything here, I want you to first realize that we have a natural log function of a quotient, right? That inside function is a quotient of two different functions. And so when you see that, you're going to want to use another property of logarithms, which in this case is if you have the natural log of a divided by b, that is equal to the natural log of a minus the natural log of b, right? So you have the natural log of the numerator, 
a minus the natural log of the denominator b. And so we are able to split this function up into two separate terms, and that's going to make it a whole lot easier to take the derivative of. And so if we do that in this case, we will have that our function f of x is equal to the natural log of x minus eight, our numerator, and then we're going to subtract the natural log of x cubed, our denominator. And so now, if we want to find f prime of x, we'll need to take the derivative of both of these natural log functions, and that's going to be a whole lot easier. But before we do that, there's one more thing I see, and that is that we have the natural log of a function to a power, which if you remember that rule that we looked at in one of our previous examples, we can take that power and move it out to the front, right? That is another property of natural logs. And so our function will be equal to the natural log of x minus eight minus three times the natural log of x. And so then if we wanna find the derivative, we'll have that f prime of x is equal to the derivative of this function. So we're gonna have one divided by that inside function. So we'll have one divided by x minus eight. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function, which in this case is just going to be one, right? The derivative of x is one and the derivative of negative eight is zero because negative eight is a constant. And so we're just multiplying by the derivative of one. And then we will subtract three times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is just going to be one divided by x. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to one divided by x minus eight minus three divided by x. And so this is a perfectly acceptable answer for the derivative of your function. However, if you are interested in simplifying this even further by getting a common denominator and combining these fractions, I'll put that work up here on the screen for you to look at. You can pause the video if you like, and if you have any questions on that work, you can ask me about it in the comments below. But if you're just looking for the derivative of this function and you're not asked to fully simplify, the answer that we found here is just fine. Okay, let's look at another example. For our next example, we have that g of x is equal to the natural log of x quantity squared. And we wanna find g prime of x or the derivative of this function. And so in this case, you might be tempted to use one of those properties for natural logs for this function, but be careful, you cannot move this power to the outside of the function because this power is not inside the natural log function, right? That property of moving the power is only applicable when you have the natural log of some function to some power, not when the natural log itself is taken to a power. And so in this case, we're not going to be able to simplify this and make it easier. We're going to have to use the chain rule to find this derivative. And that's because this is a composite function where the outside function is this quantity squared and the inside function is the natural log of x. And so if we're going to find g prime of x, what we'll have to do is first take the derivative of the outside function and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. And so the derivative of our outside function will be two times the natural log of x, and that will be to the power of two minus one, right? We multiplied that exponent down and then subtracted one from the exponent. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which in this case, we know the derivative of the natural log of x is one divided by x. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to two times the natural log of x divided by x, right? This is just the power of one. And so we just have the natural log of x here, which is this right here, and that's multiplied by two, and we are dividing by x. And so this is our final answer, and this will be the derivative of our function. Let's look at another example. All right, so next we have that y is equal to the natural log of the natural log, and we wanna find y prime, or the first derivative of this function. And so this is a bit of a wacky function, but we can still find the derivative of it. We are going to have to use the chain rule again because we have a function inside another function, right? This is a composite function, except in this case, the outside function and the inside function are the same function, right? It's the natural log on the outside and the natural log on the inside. And so we'll start by taking the derivative of the outside function. So we're going to have that y prime is equal to one divided by that inside function the natural log of x, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function, which is one divided by x. And so if we multiply these together, we're just going to have that y prime is equal to one divided by x times the natural log of x, and that's it. That's going to be our final answer and the derivative of this function. Let's look at another example. All right, next we have that y is equal to x times the natural log of x, and we wanna find dy dx or the derivative of y with respect to x. 
All right, and so in this case, dy dx is going to be equal to the derivative of this function, and we're going to have to use the product rule in this case, right, because we have two functions being multiplied together of x and the natural log of x. And so if you're not familiar with the product rule, I'll have it here on the screen for you to reference, but all we're going to do for the product rule is take our first function, which is x, multiplied by the derivative of our second function, the natural log of x. So we're gonna have one divided by x because that is the derivative of the natural log of x. And then we are going to add that to our second function, the natural log of x, multiplied by the derivative of our first function, which is x. And the derivative of x is just one because the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to the coefficient, which in this case would be one. And so if we simplify this, we'll have that the derivative dy dx is equal to x divided by x plus the natural log of x. And x divided by x is just one. And so that means that this will be equal to one plus the natural log of x. And so that is the final answer or the derivative dy dx. All right, so for our next example, we have the function h of t is equal to the natural log of t divided by t. And we wanna find the first derivative h prime of t. And so for this example, we're going to need to use the quotient rule because our function is a quotient of two functions. And so if you don't remember the quotient rule, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to look at. But what we're gonna have is that h prime of t is equal to our bottom function or the denominator, t times the derivative of the top function or the numerator, which the derivative of the natural log of t is just going to be one divided by t. Right, it doesn't matter that this is defined with t and not x. The natural log of t or x is still going to be one divided by that variable. And then we will subtract that top function or the numerator, the natural log of t, times the derivative of the bottom function or the denominator. And so in this case, the derivative of t or a variable to the first power is just the coefficient, which in this case is one. And that will all be divided by the denominator or the bottom function squared. And so we'll have t squared in the denominator. All right, and so if we simplify, h prime of t will be equal to t times one divided by t. That's just t divided by t. And so that's just going to be equal to one. And so we'll have one minus the natural log of t times one, which is just going to be the natural log of t divided by t squared. And that is in its simplest form. And so this will be the final answer or the derivative of our function. All right, so for our next example, we have that z is equal to the natural log of the square root of x plus one divided by x minus one. And we wanna find z prime or the first derivative of this function. And so in this case, we're going to want to do some manipulating to our function using some of the rules we know about the natural log, right? Because inside our natural log function is the square root of some quantity. And so we could rewrite that to have that z is equal to the natural log of x plus one divided by x minus one to the one half power. And so since this function is inside the natural log function, we can move this power to the outside. We can use that property of logs and remove that power by moving it to the front of the function. And so this will be equal to one half times the natural log of x plus one divided by x minus one. But we're not done yet because we also now have a quotient within the natural log function. And so we can use that quotient property that the natural log of one function divided by another function is going to be equal to the natural log of the numerator function minus the natural log of the denominator function. And so when we do that, we're going to keep this coefficient of one half attached to the natural log in each term. And so let me show you what I mean. We'll have that this is equal to one half times the natural log of x plus one, and then we're going to subtract one half times the natural log of x minus one, right? So that one half stays with each natural log function. All right, so now that we have simplified our original function of z, we now have a function that is going to be a lot easier to take the derivative of. And so let's clean up our work here, and then we will do that. All right, so if we wanna take the derivative of this, we will have that z prime is equal to one half times the derivative of the natural log of x plus one. So we're going to have one divided by x plus one, right? We're gonna have one divided by that inside function. And then we will multiply by the derivative of that function, which the derivative of x plus one is just going to be one because the derivative of x is one and the derivative of one is zero. So we're just gonna be multiplying by one. And then we will subtract 
1 half times 1 divided by x minus 1, right? Because we're going to take 1 divided by that inside function. And then we don't want to forget to multiply by the derivative of that function. But in this case, once again, the derivative is just going to be 1 because the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of negative 1 is 0. And so if we simplify, we'll have that z prime is equal to 1 divided by 2 times x plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 times x minus 1. And so if you're just looking for the derivative of this function, this would be the derivative z prime. However, this does have a more simplified answer that's actually a lot nicer. And so it might be of interest to combine these two fractions by getting a common denominator. And so if you're interested in seeing that work, I'll have it up here on the screen for you to look at. And so you can pause the video if you'd like, but when you look at it, just remember that the difference of squares, which in this case, x squared minus one is the same as x plus one times x minus one. So that's how that denominator changes at the end. But once again, if you have any questions about finding the common denominator, feel free to ask those questions in the comments below. All right, and so when you're done looking at that work, we will move on to the next example. All right, so next we have that y is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of the cosecant function. And we wanna find y prime or the derivative of this function. And so don't get too worried about these absolute value bars. All that these are here for is to ensure that the values from the cosecant function are positive because the natural log function is only defined for positive values or positive numbers. And so the derivative process is going to be exactly the same. The absolute value bars do not change how we take the derivative of the natural log function. And so what we'll have for y prime here is that it will be equal to one divided by that inside function cosecant x, so we'll have cosecant x, and then we will multiply by the derivative of cosecant x, which the derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant x times cotangent x. And so what you'll notice here is that this cosecant and this cosecant function are going to cancel, and so we're just gonna be left with this one times negative cotangent x, and so y prime is gonna be equal to negative cotangent x, and that will be the derivative of our function. All right, let's look at one more final example for this video. Okay, so for our final example, we have the function f of x is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. And we wanna find the first derivative, f prime of x. All right, so once again, don't be tripped up by these absolute value bars. It's just ensuring that these two functions are outputting positive values. And so if we take the derivative, we'll have f prime of x is equal to one divided by that inside function, so we'll have secant x plus tangent x in the denominator. So we'll have secant x plus tangent x. And then we will multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And so we know from our trig rules for derivatives that the derivative of secant x is secant times tangent. So we will have secant x times tangent x. And then the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. And so we will have plus secant squared x. All right, and so if we simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to secant x tangent x plus secant squared x divided by secant x plus tangent x. And so now we're not quite done yet. We can actually simplify this a little bit more by noticing that we can pull out a secant x out of each term in the numerator. And so watch what happens when we do that. This will be equal to secant x times tangent x plus secant x, and that will still be divided by secant x plus tangent x, right? So we just pulled secant x out of each of these terms, and so for this term, we're just left with tangent x, and for this term, we're just left with one secant x, because we had secant x squared before, so if we pull out one of those, we're just left with secant x. But now notice what happens here. We have a tangent x plus secant x quantity in the numerator, and a secant plus tangent x in the denominator. Now remember that the order in which you add things together doesn't matter. And so tangent x plus secant x is the same as secant x plus tangent x. And so these two quantities will actually cancel out and all we're gonna be left with is secant x. And so our final answer here is that this is equal to secant x. That is going to be the derivative of this function. And so that is the end of our last example for this video. And so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.